Hey, what's up? My name is Patrick Lovell, and I'm Truth Bomb Riffing the Con. I think I'm up to 425 of these that have been landing for about a year and three quarters. After I've produced as a muckraking journalist and independent producer a work that has the answers the goddamn world is looking for, particularly most people in American society, that they can't wrap their heads around or see the forest for the trees because of just too much misinformation, disinformation, and not enough time and ignorance and a lot of things that people just don't simply understand the way the world works. And I've laid it all out. You can find it for free at www.thecon.tv. And I've done other works called The New Untouchables that you can find. Just do a Google search. And then, of course, a myriad of any of my truth bombs that extrapolates what's happening in the moment and ties it all back to the corruption that is the existential threat that has a control over everything that ultimately um, – is creating this insane world that we live in that is spinning out of control uh, more and more chaotically every single day. And I think that's incredible given everything that we've seen for the past 20 years. So this message is for young people, people that are just coming into their adulthood, people that are pretty much just graduated from high school, moving into college, young adults looking at the world that, um, you know, are trying to understand. And you, like me, and like everybody in American society, um, have had a whole myriad of cultural influences, whether it's from your video games or music or sports or your, um, I don't know, let's just call it socialization in high school or your comeuppance and maybe if you're in college, whatever your social networks might be. And they all have some sort of influence on um, who you are and what you've become and ultimately most likely because of your family experience that all co corresponds and coincides to create how your process processing, I should say, what we're all in the midst of. And it's 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 both a sort of situation to where you, you think that you have a pretty good sense of who you are and how things are going and what direction you're going, while at the same time understanding that there's things out there that you don't understand. Because I've, I've met a lot of you. A lot of you are like, yeah, I learn more and more a day, every day about some manner, shape, or form of the uh, society or economy cheating to an end, but I don't exactly know how they do it. But yet I'm starting to think about things because I want to get mine. I want to get my American dream. I want to go through to where I'm going and I want to live happily ever after like everybody else. And you have the priorities like I did when I was your age. You want to go out and you want to have fun. You want to meet, you know, whatever your interest is and you want to have a great time and you want to move forward and you want to kind of create the world that, you know, is going to manifest the next 20, 30 years, hopefully, but maybe you have a sense that things aren't working out so well. And there might not be a 20 or 30 years, depending on the outcome of a lot of things that are happening now. So you choose where you belong in society and how you think about things and you're learning as you go. But as I have witnessed firsthand recently, which I love and I can connect with you on, is that you know, I've seen some younger concerts, for example, that were really interesting uh, from a standpoint of what I could relate to. So, for example, when I grew up, I came out of the late 80s in my sort of young adulthood, kind of metamorphosized during the late 80s, early 90s, and into the early aughts uh, when I eventually got married and, and raised a family. And all of that history from the 90s on, and to many of you, that might seem like ancient history. But when I came out of high school and went into college, like the things that were really, you know, super influential in me were, for me, were my sports, uh, you know, and I also, you know, played all sorts of sports, particularly football was my thing, but skateboarding and that lifestyle and surfing and snowboarding and travel. And that was a big part of my life, but as was adventure of any kind. And, and that was really what was my sort of, uh, passion forever. But a lot of influences for me were at that time, punk rock, rock and roll, shows, scenes, things that I was involved with, reading, and I love to understand the world I came out of. And a big influence of me growing up was ultimately the 60s and 70s, you know, the Vietnam generation, the hippie generation, and the Grateful Dead that ultimately also kind of had this other sort of schism, which was punk rock and all things like fuck the man and the establishment and don't sell out and all those sorts of things. And I've always been a guy that believed in the American dream, but at the same time was very sort of, um, shall we say, um, this is what I'm looking for. I, I, I was always very cautionary towards power in central power. And I was always a bit of an outlaw. And I was always a bit of, a, of an anarchist in a sense. You know, I, I didn't really just fall in line and I was never 
<clears throat> complicit with the direction that you're supposed to go in power and everything else. Hence why I was very interested in punk rock. So what's that have to do with you? So for example, I've seen a lot of <clears throat> concerts, <clears throat> sorry, recently that include things like Travis Scott, this young African-American dude who has this incredible energy and he kind of reminded me of, you know, my son, I think he's about the same age. I think he's early 20s. My son's 18 years old. But I'd heard a lot of his music because I know it, it existed on uh, on um, video games, of all things. Uh, that was interesting how a lot of people came to know his music through that sort of outlier. And then the way you discover things on Spotify and probably in, in your societal sort of configuration, whether or not you're on campus and you're at parties and people know these you know, the words to the lyrics of these rap songs and how they're supposed to act and the, the vibes that they create. And I could see that all kind of transcend in this incredible concert that, you know, had 15, 16, 17,000 plus people all in sync and bouncing at the same time. And there was a great big mosh pit, which I was happy to see because honestly, you know, I wasn't sure how the kids were working it these days. You know, I happened to see this concert, like, I don't know, three months ago, two months ago, where it was pretty wild. I saw Suicide Boys and uh, a guy like by the name of Ghostbane, who was a bit of a freak show. But the two of those guys reminded me of stuff that came up during my era, which was called Cypress Hill and also Marilyn Manson. And so there was a similar vibe, but there was also this mosh pit. And, and what I noticed about both of these concerts, which really inspired me, to be honest with you, was that there were white, black, Latino, Asian, every which – way to sun Sunday, the types of people that, you know, came to these shows and everybody was bouncing in harmony and, and slam and having a good time and interacting and, and being this thing. And I kept thinking to myself as I was watching these sorts of massive high energy, um, you know, human waves as they are, which again, just makes me super stoked. Sorry to be a, you know, call back to the eighties. I hope that's not too weird, but the nature of, yeah, there's energy, man, and people are making shit happen, and that's cool, and they've got vision, and, they, and, and they've got this thing and this connection and everything else. And I kept wondering, how many of these people understand the politics of today? How many understand what's going on, whether it's, you know, let's call it the establishment represented by Joe Biden and maybe old school democ democracy and uh, the way you perceive it, and that versus MAGA and everything that that, you know, entails with Donald Trump and you know, when we ultimately have presidential elections, we have the entire country all over, you know, the demographic spectrum and also the ideological spectrum and in racial and, you know, whatever other category you want to consider that come under to choose leadership, which determines outcomes and elections have consequences. And we're in this sort of scenario where I think a lot of people are they don't want to be anywhere near associated with MAGA or connected to it, but they certainly know people in their schools. They certainly know people in their families that they're probably, you know, pushing back against, but it's not so coordinated in terms of this high energy thing that I just, you know, referenced with Suicide Boys and, and Travis Scott, for example, and I'm sure there's many others, but um, where, where everybody's coming together with a purpose and a vision and, and a thing that is like, okay, we're going to push the ball forward and we're going to right the wrongs of our parents' generation. Now, you know, in American history, particularly from the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and everything moving on, it's an American tradition where every new generation is like, yeah, we're going to do something better than the previous generation, and we're going to overcome. And that was really all of the civil rights movements and the anti-war movements and all of these different things that were, you know, versioning and happening in, in, in the late 60s and the 70s. And then we had a major hangover, but then a lot of things carried forward. And then the eighties was a pushback and there's a lot of history and there's a lot of things that happen in that span of time to create the world that you're inheriting, that you're living in, that is really hard to get a sort of, shall we say, solid footing in to be able to see the big picture. Now, meanwhile, everybody is guilty. And at the same time, and it's easy to understand because we have so much imagery and we have so many stories and we have so many things that people are responding to where you, you come up with your kind of place in this universe where you kind of think, yeah, I've got a really good sense of how things work and I see how things work in my own life. So I've got a really good understanding of what the problems are. And so I'm going to be able to survive and thrive and I'm going to get through this and I'm going to do whatever I, it takes to get to where I want to go and good on you for that. But I'm telling you, and I hope you can hear me, that the madness of what we're all in the midst of, 
is that the only thing that is materializing and manifesting in a massive, massive way are the cacophony and the symphony of lies. Now, they could be half-truths. They could be full-on propaganda. They could be, you know, uh, everything from misinformation, disinformation, but paid by whom and carried out by whom and for what purpose and everything else. And because of all of the media and because of the nature of how things work and a lot of what my generation has done, what we've done is we've siloed the population where it's like everything becomes about identity in a lot of ways. And identity is extremely important, but it's not the vestiges of what are espoused from the founding of our country and all of the things that have happened over the course of 246 years to create your reality now. And along those lines, there's always been changes. It starts with the Patriot, excuse me, the uh, Revolutionary War that gives us separation of powers through the Bill of Rights and the Constitution that came from the Articles of Confederation and all of those challenges that took place that literally went into, I don't know, another hundred years of war that were nonstop in terms of proliferation of, um, you know, uh, people that, uh, um, that, uh, you know, came to this country in search of the American dream and escaping all of the challenges of Europe in addition to, you know, cultures that had already, you know, indigenous people that had lived here and, and, and all of those sort of, you know, uh, challenges and everything that came out of it. But ultimately we wind up because of this contradiction of how our system works and compromise and everything else, we still had the problem of bondage. So we went from, you know, basically liberating ourselves from tyranny, which was, you know, the most powerful um, country or empire in the world at that time, uh, you know, the English crown and King George III, but it was what a lot of people don't seem to understand or, or fully conceptualize was that the organization of the monarchy of King George III and the English empire was pretty much driven by its economic engine, which was run by the East India Trading Company that pro prolificated itself in construct with parliament at the time, which was a bit of a democracy, which is oligarchs really, quite frankly, and that has a whole other set of history. But the long and the short of it is they had this incredibly powerful empire that was manifesting extraction in the, you know, um, in the, in the colonies of the United States through imperialism of which our founders fought against. And, and they understood the system. They were very, very, very smart people that understood history, men that understood history and they understood what they were up against. And they created this system supposedly of by and for the people. And before I even could get my, the words out of my mouth, I know many of you are going to say, yeah, but there were landed gentry that created the three fifth statute and the American dream was always an American lie. And yeah, that's why we have in order to form a more perfect union, which these previous generations sacrificed over and over and over to get us to an op opportunity in 2023, where most of us really have an option to live and thrive in a way that previous generations didn't. But what you don't understand and what you sense and what you feel is, yeah, there's kind of this invisible force that seemingly feels either some version of aristocratic or, you know, uh, police state or uh, anything that, um, tends to, you know, create a, a sort of strange, invisible autocracy that you can't see where the system is rigged. And it's rigged by someone, for someone, where there's something that's corrupt and someone's getting away with somebody, but you don't quite exactly know what it is. Well, if you put your head around the, the, the product that I've created, that the entire machine has made sure that they won't, that can't really get to you, that we had to make for free, that we're pushing out there, and I'm pushing myself, really, with people that are involved with me, which has been an incredibly... Uh, what we call the righteous grind, but to get this true to the, to, to, to the millions of people that need to see it, it starts with the blueprint of how this whole thing works, which is www.thecon.tv, and it's free. And I've done many other things, like I said at the outset, the new untouchables, and I've got all of these truth bombs. But the blueprint of what we show you and what all of mainstream media is preventing you from understanding. But Equally more dis and more disconcerting to me is the propaganda of independent media of the influence that you don't understand that comes from the likes of Tucker Carlson and whether willingly or unwittingly through the likes of Russell Brand <clears throat> and others in all of these sorts of scenarios, particularly a guy that I thought was one of the game changers of all time who's disappointed be beyond comprehension. Elon freaking Musk and a whole variety of others, 
that none of them are going to tell you what's going on. They're all reacting. Elon Musk knows what's going on and he's evolved with propaganda. And unfortunately, as we're seeing to a degree, and I've watched all over X, white supremacy. And yeah, anti-Semitism, which is part of the, uh, let's call it trending dialogue today, you know, as things are, are, are manifesting, which puts him at, you know, sort of a loggerhead and it's going to become a deal with President Joe Biden, who has announced that, yeah, oh yeah, Elon Musk is involved with perpetuating some anti-Semitism. And if anybody doesn't understand that by looking every single day at <clears throat> X, then you're what I call a tool in the full circus. That's not necessarily uh, an insult because it's all because of what we call asymmetric information. You know what you know, and that can be manipulated. And it took me literally, it was crazy because like you, like many of you, I thought I had the whole world figured out by the time I was 30, to be honest with you. By the time I was 40, I really, really thought I had it figured out. But then all of a sudden, everything got turned upside down, inside out, and it shook me like by hanging my, uh, you know, hanging me by my ankles upside down and my whole life was turned upside down. And I went on a mission for the last really 13 years to put together what I had to reconfigure my mind to understand that everything is a facade. And when I was growing up and I used to hear things like George Orwell and other things that I read all the time, I was always like, you know, I love it from a science fiction sort of scenario. And I love to think of what people are capable of because trust me, I've experienced all sorts of insanity my entire life, both from systems of you know fraternity and uh, you know and business and everything else. I I've been around the block. I know what people are capable of. I've also been around power for a long time, and I also started to understand how power operates. And so by the time I got to the point where my life got turned upside down and inside out, like many of your parents and many of your grandparents, I had to pull the threads to figure out what the hell was going on, and I did. And I figured it all out. And it's not that difficult, ultimately, when you understand that it's not rocket science, it's racketeering. And what is racketeering? It's conspiracy. Oh, yeah, for an outcome. Well, who's doing what, when, and how, and how did they, what do they get away with, and what do they do, and why do they do it? Well, all of those answers and everything that I provide to you that give this playing field of all of this confusion that nobody wants to understand. But I think all of us can understand very simply that money is the lifeblood of everything. Most of us want a lot of money. Wouldn't you love to drive around in a really great car? And wouldn't you love to have big parties and your friends over and travel and go do these things and look great and have all sorts of bling and, you know, be in the center of it all? Yeah. And many people are chasing it because, you know, this is playing out on their phone and a lot of people are espousing that and expressing that and making it look great. But you know what? There's a lot of skeletons in the closet and there's a lot of things you're not seeing and you know that. You've seen that in your own lives and you've seen a lot of craziness after COVID and you've seen a lot of depression and you've seen a lot of things that are, you know, really mucking up situations and you're like, what the hell's going on? And you've got this explosive energy <clears throat> and I've seen it firsthand. Like I said, at the Suicide Boys concert, that energy was explosive. And what I am hoping for is somehow we've got to connect. We've got to come together. We're separated by two decades but at the same time, we share a lot of the same energy and a lot of the same hope and object, I mean, uh, objectives because I am all about <clears throat> liberty and justice for all. I don't care what your race is or your religion or your come from or your sexual identity. I want everybody in this country to have the opportunity to become what they want, but they've got to live within the rules of society. But within the rules of society, we've got to have a law that holds power to account that is controlling everything. You know that only a handful of people have a shit ton of money, right? And I see over and over when I go to these concerts, for example, I see a group of kids that are on the floor that are paying $800 a ticket, and I'm like, where'd you get that money? And a lot of them were getting that money from their parents. And a lot of their parents had got a lot of money because they were on the receiving end of what happened of what I'm revealing to you. We, we had this massive, coup d'etat revolution that nobody understands that came through the previous 20, 30 years that ultimately came to a head in 2008 that blew up the global economy that then led to massive, massive emergency measures by the full faith and credit of the United States to save the global economy. And what they did 
was they saved the billionaires. And they created a trickle-down scenario where they provided tens of trillions of dollars to the billionaires into the billionaire apparatus, which is our final financial system, that had trickle down for the top 1% of those who had assets and stocks and real estate, and they manipulated it all through socialism. That's the whole point here. It's through a criminal racketeering enterprise that got socialism to where all of these tech cats on the top, including our beloved Elon Musk, who's the richest man in the world today, net worth about $20, $250 billion, give or take, 10 to $30 billion on a fluctuation on any given day, considering what's going on in the markets. And that guy could buy a lot of things, including X, to kind of espouse his own ideology, of which he's challenging, you know, basically the entire legal system, given everything he's seen over the course of the last 15, 20 years, that, hey, you're going to stop me? Take me to court. Good luck. I'll buy the best attorneys in the world. I get you jammed up in the courts. Meanwhile, I'll sell propaganda all day, every day, which he can do and which he's doing. And I, again, I used to think that Elon Musk was like manna from heaven. I, I thought this guy is going to change the paradigm because I'm all in on renewable energy. And I love what he's done with Tesla. And I'm actually a fan of uh, SpaceX to a degree, although I know all the details of behind the scenes of how both of those entities have come to be. And, and, and actually the extraordinary investment that the United States government had in those companies and their success and everything that took place you know, with, with all of the uh, financialization of, of both of those companies and how it all works, which is part and parcel to what I'm telling you. But what you need to understand is that tens of trillions of dollars were used illegally to backstop and, and, and create socialism through this incredible pipeline of architecture that is nothing but theft and these entities looting from the country for the new tyranny to create this outcome of chaos. And we're all in the midst of it. And so along those lines, for example, you need to be aware, not only do they provide tens of trillions of dollars illegally, and I've got the evidence of that, and I could talk to you all about that all day, every day, which is racketeering, which the United States federal government is demonstrating every day that Donald Trump has been in the midst of. That's what they're showing you, which is what I show you about the entire financial system. And I've got more information than you could ever possibly imagine. Who am I? I'm a guy who spent millions of dollars, sacrificed his life to get the entirety of the truth, that all of media, that all of government, that the judiciary is hiding from you and has betrayed you. And they're sticking it up your ass, just like they did previous generations. And they will, unless millions of us come together <clears throat> with that incredible energy that I know exists. We got to meet MAGA head on. But you got to have a vision and you got to have, and it's not just MAGA, it's the status quo. What I continue to say and perpetuate is that really what the battle is right now is between what I call the new robber barons versus the new confederacy. And both those models are super, super exploitative capitalism. Now, what is capitalism? A lot of your generation can't stand capitalism and think capitalism is the enemy. But what I just told you is we're not a capitalist country. We're a socialist country. But for criminals. And that's the story. Because capitalism really is an ideology, is risk-reward and creative destruction. We have a thing called bankruptcy. So if bad actors or people who break the law go to jail, they have all their money taken from them and their business goes sideways and they can't do business again. That's called the law. But as you can see with Donald Trump, that's not happening. So what's going on with the law? Well, are you aware that the Supreme Court has been revealing all sorts of incredible corruption in, you know, involving billionaires uh, you know, and gifts to Supreme Court justices that are on the libertarian slash conservative side that self-help themselves, that got put there you know, to a, you know, a lifelong uh, a position on the Supreme Court where they're literally getting gifts from billionaires while they're making decisions on uh, cases that are important to billionaires? Like Clarence Thomas and Judge Alito and really all of them, Kavanaugh, I don't know what's in his closet, but boy, there's more than beer kegs and chicks that got drunk that they sexually assaulted back in the day, brother Kavanaugh. I mean, my God, the corruption is so stupid and so insane, but it's how systems work. And you all know it. You've all gone to the fraternity that you can't get in, right? Unless you're in it and you know the secret handshake and maybe you were getting the secret handshake and maybe you were a good guy, but maybe you were like, super hopped up on coke one night and a bunch of guys raped a chick because they got her on some sort of 
uh, you know, roofie and you watched and didn't do anything about it. You wanted to, but you know that if you did, you'd get kicked out of the fraternity and, you know, you don't want to do that because your dad got you in because of his legacy and you know you're going to get shot. That's called complicity. And that's part of the art, racketeering art. And that's how the mob operates. And you know how you break all of that shit? Well, twofold. One is you either have a war, a big fight and a revolution, depending on, you know, who you're fighting, or you have the law work. And the law is supposed to hold bad acting accountable because we have laws against that sort of thing. And you all know that. This is the basic construct. And so like in the last 24 hours, you know, I know I've, I've definitely, you know, scratched the surface and, and started to kick the, the, the hornet's nest in every single direction and it's working and people are starting to figure out who I am. But they're coming from this perspective of like, they don't know who I am from the standpoint of they don't know all my work. They haven't listened to my 425, seven truth bombs or whatever the number is today. And they don't know, you know, what my work in the con is and they don't know what I've said and how I've said it. And so maybe they get a piece of this and they're responding where they're like, well, this guy's saying this and it doesn't align with what I know because I'm kind of over here and I might've heard this and that. And so you're trying to suss it out and you don't really know until you get the full scope of the education of what's going on. And like I continue to reiterate in this whole situation is guys, I am all about liberty and justice for all from a patriotic endeavor because it is the greatest system that has ever been devised in the history of the world that's still flawed like crazy because people are flawed. And I can promise you, and I'm going to use this from a metaphorical uh, you know, connection, and I hope you can kind of ponder this, but what I learned a long time ago was the greatest trick the devil ever played was to convince the world he didn't exist. Because I'm a wise guy and I can figure shit out and I'm a bit of a brawler and I have been my entire life that goes into pits and, you know, slam dances back in my youth, just like a lot of you cats are doing now. And that was kind of my come from. And I, I understand how that all feels and what that's all about. And in the expression of it, you know, it, it, they, the system must have thought I was, you know, they were pissing on my head, you know, telling me it was rain and thinking I was some kind of new fool. And I wasn't. I just figured out what the fuck they were doing because I know how to do that because I'm a producer. And I also understand history and I understand I got a college education. I've been there, done that. I've been in the game. I've walked around. I've been, I've run around, you know, the block many, many times. I've seen just about everything that there is to see, honestly. And I'm just trying to break through to capture and connect those who understand the triumph and how important it is to live free with integrity and dignity so that everybody can go find their own dream. But you got to live within the confines of the law too. And if you break the law, we used to say back in the day, if you can't do the, you know, don't do the crime if you can't do the time. I mean, same as it ever was, but the entirety of the United States for democracy the, and liberty and justice for all through separation of powers can only exist with integrity of law. And ultimately, the media is supposed to be the fourth state who holds that all in, in the check. But what we, what we became, and, and this is the whole situation, we're not a capitalist country. We're not a communist country. We're not... Although we're close to what I would call the Politburo, and you'd have to look into what Stalin did, you know, after all of the chaos in Russia, you know, from the revolution through World War II to get to Stalin to understand what I'm talking about that. But none of the isms get it completely right, and corruption is always what fucks everything up, and it has throughout history. But what I'm trying to tell you, and I continue to try to tell everybody, we live in a modern society, right? You can go and you take it for granted where you get in your car where the brakes work and everything works great. And you, you know, go through a city that has all of the lights and the infrastructure work to go to a job that gets you, you know, on an elevator where that works properly. And you can go, you know, on an airplane where that op operates properly. And, and none of that happens by accident. It happens because we've got professionals in the system that create it based on engineering and the rules and the regulations that make them safe. So they don't all fall apart and everything else. But what you can't see through the forest for the trees is that money is a little bit different. Money is different when you can manipulate outcomes and you can set everybody up. And so we don't live in a democracy, okay? A lot of people are going to tell you, well, of course we don't live in a democracy because we live in a constitutional republic that's a representative republic. What they're not telling you is that that's a manipulative uh, scenario to make you understand that they can use gerrymandering and dark money and all sorts of manipulation through corruption that basically gives us rule by the minority which is tyranny and the opposite of democracy. And what we really are is a corporate fascist state. And for those of you who were, look up those two terms, you'll, you'll find that there's, it's a bit of redundancy, and that's the point. We are a corporate fascist system 
undergirded by a criminal syndicate that uses socialism because tens of trillions of dollars came from the Fed illegally to backstop the system, to backstop this system of global racketeering and criminality that is now fueling fascism. Back in the day, James Brown have, ha, had this great song called The Big Payback. You know, African-Americans for a long time knew the whole system was rigged. And a lot of African-Americans came up in the system as hard guys that are like, you know what, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? And so they did everything they can to kind of get theirs and everything else. And it's always this ebbs and flows and this battle and everything else. But guys, we've gotten to a point where there's no turning back, man. My whole life, I have seen stuff where, you know, criminals do some crazy ass shit. And... Sometimes they can last a while before they get popped and then they ended up getting popped and then they get reformed. They go somewhere. They keep doing it until they're dead. Yeah, that's part of American society. OK, but when the system and the professionals and the legal system and the judiciary go to that level of criminality infinitum. Dude, we're off the rails and that's where we are. And I'm not even talking about the conflicts around the world. I'm just talking about what's happening in the United States. And so what we're up against right now is we're up against this rising methodology of fascism. And a lot of the people that, you know, basically back Trump, which is just a fucking con artist and a criminal and a bloviating idiot. And what do you think about that asshole's hair? That guy's got the dumbest, stupidest freaking hair I've ever seen in my entire life. And you all know, most of you know, he's a complete pig and you hate his guts. But there's a whole lot of people that have got his back, right? They don't care about the law. They say they care about the law, but they don't care about the law if they, you know, if they if they support Trump because they all know he's breaking the law. They're like, yeah, but he's our guy. There used to be back in the neighborhoods. It was like, you know what, that guy's bad, but at least he's my guy, right? And that's how this stuff gets perpetuated. And Trump is supposedly kind of fighting the system, but he is the system. He's the manifestation of the system. This is what happens. And what I continue to say is my shortcut is corruption births and fuels fascism. And so. My message to you, my friends, is that we got to come together, man, and we got to raise the truth. And this is what I call exodus from corruption to resurrect the American dream. And yeah, maybe it's the end of the world. But if it is the end of the world, what I'm offering, when we all understand how this whole system works and we can punch through this, we're creating and we're pushing what we call the Clean New Deal. And the Clean New Deal, we can get into the details and we can talk about everything that it's supposed to do. But let me just give you this. The system that I'm revealing to you has looted over $70 trillion, $70 trillion since 2011 to go to the bad guys. That's how billionaires quadrupled their wealth during COVID when you weren't in school thinking about all of the you know dark, depressing things that you had to deal with. Well, maybe some people got $1,600 checks and many, many others were looting through PPP programs. I shit you not. Everybody was like doing fraud like crazy which has, again, now become the American way. Lie, steal, and cheat, man. Don't hate the game. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. That's because the law has completely failed. The law can be used to go into, what, black neighborhoods and shoot black guys in the back or, you know, whatever they're doing, you know, with no accountability. <clears throat> Meanwhile, a guy like Trump, he can break gag orders and he can get away with shit, not to mention all of his crimes, and he's still breathing free air. Why is that? Well, because he put together a lot of important people behind him that, you know, got judges to play ball and it's corruption. And that's how fascism works. And fascism happens after everything else fails. When the institutions of integrity and dignity and the balance of powers and separation of powers and mostly character holds power to account. Look, I learned this a long time ago. We have two columns of our soul. You've got character, integrity, and dignity. And then you've got hypocrisy, duplicity, and complicity. And no matter what's going on, you're going to have to fuel, you're going to have to go one way or the other. A lot of people go to the dark side. That's why it's called the dark side. I had a lot of friends go to the dark side my whole life. I never went to the dark side. I don't know why. It's not a part of my DNA. I don't know how to do it. Because I hate hatred. And I hate evil winning. And this is the light. And again, I'm not the Messiah. But if we're going to have, for example the, you know, Armageddon slash um, the, uh, you know, it's right on the tip of my tongue, what the Christians are always talking about in terms of, uh, God, it's right there on the tip of my tongue. And I've been having a problem with this like the last couple of times I've said it. The end of the world where it can like, you know, the battle between good and evil where the wicked get defeated and then the righteous, you know, uh, rise. That's the idea. 
metaphorically, that's what's going on. But we've got to defeat the tyranny of evil, the darkness of greed, the, 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 the manifestation of complicity and duplicity and lies and liars and the whole thing that has got this whole system that's mucked up. And the only way you can do that is to elevate the truth. And I've got the truth, man. And I'm not trying to be your leader, your dear leader. I'm not trying to be an autocrat. I'm a producer. I'm the deliverer. I'm giving you the information that took us years and years and years to put together. And yeah, I want to be a part of putting all of the answers together. But the $70 trillion that this system that got away with by burying the world, can you think of better ways to spend $70 trillion for a more equal and just society? Oh, I can. But particularly because as you all know, we're still, the existential threat beyond corruption and fascism is what's going on with our environment. Yeah, man, this, this is bad times. We're right up against it. And so the Clean New Deal is to get rid of corruption, to hold fascism and corruption to account, and to reconfigure the situation to where free markets can happen, but to where you have safety nets, and to where we incentivize what has to become a new global paradigm of energy, starting with the United States which is going to lead to this incredible re revolution, renaissance of the new economy. That's who we are. The United States can do anything. There, there's nothing we haven't overcome with all of our flaws. Again, we defeated tyranny. We defeated, and we had abolitionists from the very beginning. We defeated slavery. But every time, these villains on the dark side, they keep coming back, right? After we defeated slavery, what did we end up, end up with? Jim Crow. What is Jim Crow? Jim Crow is a legal structure that basically holds people down. And we had an economic structure where we gave slaves what we call um, the uh, um, sharecropping, which was the first form of predation in lending. You can set people up with asymmetric p information when they don't know how they're getting played because everybody wants to get credit, to buy things, to see things, to kind of get an opportunity until you run out. And if you get super, super indebted, yeah, one day, maybe you lose your job and everything falls apart. And when it falls apart for millions of people, we have global misery through what's known as a depression, which has happened several times. And after 2008, yeah, we had a great depression for tens of millions of people that didn't get bailed out by the system illegally. And that's what I'm trying to reveal to you. And there's more. And there's always more. But I hope that if you have questions, reach out to me. If you want to join us, please reach out to me. We need millions and millions of people to come on board, to understand the truth, to be able to get on the righteous grind so that we can plow through and destroy the liars that are deceiving us all so that we can create a new world. We got to re reboot, my friends, and we can't reboot towards fascism. There's no way in hell I'm going to let that happen. And I can assure you that everybody I've seen at these huge concerts with all that, that, that uh, energy and, and, quite frankly, strength, I saw so many people that were incredibly gifted, strong people that are good people. I could tell. And I talked to a bunch of them. We need to get tens of millions of you guys on the same page. We got to join with all of the people that came from previous generations, like my generation, and generations that came together. And we got to rise as one and we got to create this groundswell that's going to create the revolution against tyranny. And why would you want to do that? Well, it's kind of the whole point of being an American. It really is. I'd argue it's the point of being a human, but it's the point of being an American. And I don't know. There's so much more to say, but thanks for tuning in. Listen, all the best to you. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Onwards and upwards.